Welcome to the lecture for Math 1325 on Section 9.8, Higher Order Derivatives. We're going to look at how to take uh, second and third derivatives, etc., and what this actually means. Okay. What we're asking here when we're talking about higher order derivatives is what is the rate of change of the rate of change. This can be a little bit confusing, so let's look at an example. Since cell phones were first introduced, their, popula their popularity has grown enormously. The graph at the right shows the number of cell phone subscribers worldwide by year. We could find out how fast the number of subscribers was growing, the rate of change, on specific dates, for example at point A, B, and C, by simply taking the derivative at each point. By comparing how steep the tangent lines are in red at A, B, and C, we can see that B is the steepest. So the number of subscribers was growing faster on date B than on dates A or C. Remember, a steeper slope means faster change. If we wanted to know exactly how those companies compare, or how fast the growth in subscribers is changing at each date. Notice we are asking what is the rate of change of the rate of change, or what is the derivative of the derivative. So let's look at what that means um, notationally. Oops. Because the derivative of a function is itself a function, we can take a derivative of the derivative. For example, find the second derivative of y equals x to the fourth minus 3x squared plus x to the negative 2. By now you should be able to take the first derivative pretty simply and quickly. And by that we get 4x cubed minus 6x minus 2x to the negative 3. Notice the second derivative, which is denoted by y double prime, y prime prime, is equal to 12x squared minus 6 plus 6x to the negative 4. So the second derivative is merely the derivative of the first derivative. So hit pause and try this yourself. Notice we're trying to find the second derivative again, which we denote by f prime prime. Again, the first derivative is pretty straightforward, 9x squared minus 8x. The second derivative is going to be 18x minus 8. Let's look at some notations here. When we're talking about the first derivative, we should be familiar with both of these notations now, f prime of x or dy dx. Both of these are asking to take the first derivative. When we're looking at the second derivative, f prime prime, we would write this d2y over dx2, the second derivative of y. The third derivative is f prime prime prime, or d3y over dx3. And the fourth and beyond, now we put a number, um, it almost looks like an exponent in parentheses of x, and then we still put the number d4y over dx4, or whatever that number would be. So let's try some more practice. Find the second derivative of y equals the square root of 2x minus 1. You might hit pause here and try to do this on your own or move forward as well. So the first thing we have to do is find the first derivative. Here we have a power rule or a chain rule, excuse me, the chain rule. We bring the power down in front, the outer function, 2x minus 1, the new, the new um, exponent is minus 1 less, or negative 1 half, and then the derivative of the inner is 2. Simplifying this, we get 2x minus 1 to the negative 1 half. Now we're going to take the derivative of this to get the second derivative. So we bring the negative 1 half in front, again we have a uh, chain rule, 2x minus 1 is unchanged, 
the exponent is now negative one half minus one or negative three halves and the derivative in, inside is still two and we clean this up and we get negative the power or the, the difference of two x minus one all raised to the power of negative three halves. Since our original formula was in a radical form we should probably also put our answer in radical form. So notice that a negative exponent simply means it goes to the other side of the fraction and uh, a fractional exponent means that it's a radical. So it's this is negative 1 over the square root of 2x minus 1 to the third. Again, let's try another practice problem. Here it might be a good idea to hit pause again and try it on your own. The first derivative we get 12x squared plus 10x plus 0, which we don't write. The second derivative, 24x plus 10. The third derivative is 24. And the fourth derivative is 0. Okay. Again, hopefully these derivatives are becoming simpler and easier for you to do as you go through practice. Oh, that is not what I had hoped for. Sorry about that. Looks like you got to see the whole screen at once that there aren't very good builds. But here we can walk through this and you can see it and if you want to try it, I, I'm not sure what to tell you. So we're using International Telecommunications Union and Key Global Telecom Indicators data from 1990 and projected to, to 2020. The number of worldwide cell phone subscribers in billions can be modeled by this function, C of T equals, and you can see it where t equals the numbers of years past 1990. So if t was 1, that would represent 1991. Find instantaneous rate of change of c of t. Well, no, we can see instantaneous rate of change. We should immediately identify that as the derivative of c of t, which is the number of cell phone subscribers. So we're just asking to take the derivative 3 times this multiple um, to the power of 2 plus 2 times this multiplier uh, to the power of 1 minus 0.296 and the t drops and this of course is 0. So we get this first derivative. Then it asks us to find the instantaneous rate of change of the answer to part a. So it's asking us to find the derivative of the derivative or c double prime t and again we take the exponent bring it down as a multiplier so we get this new multiplier. The exponent becomes 1 less so it is now 1 and here we just have the multiplier in front of t. Now it's asking us to find the instantaneous rate of change of subscribers in 2015. So this is the first derivative, just the, the number of, um, excuse me, the rate of change of subscribers in 2015. So this is just C prime 25. Plug this in and we get 0 0.409 billion um, per year. So about a half a billion people per year are subscribing um, to cell phone use, okay? Notice that we found 25, even though the year is 2015, 20, 000, 2015. Remember that t is the number of years past 1990, so we just um, subtracted that there. Okay, and now it says use the second derivative to find out how fast subscribership is changing in 2015. And so what's happening here is we're trying to find how fast the change is happening. And so when we plug in 25 into the second derivative, Notice we get a negative answer, okay? So what does this mean? Okay, let's look at this. In the last problem, we found the following information. This is the, the calculations we just did. The instantaneous rate of change of subscribers in 2015 was 0.409 billion per year. So we're adding another almost a half a billion or 0.4 billion subscribers per year, 400 million. But how fast is the subscriber, how fast is subscribership changing? And what this is showing is that at, at B, what's happening now is that we are actually slowing down. Okay? Although the actual number of subscribers is still going up, what this is saying is the, the slope is starting to slow down. We're at 2015. It's not at B. It's right about here. So we can see that the curve is stopping being so steep and it's starting to level. So 
so while the number of users is still growing overall it's just not growing as fast as it did in the past and that's what this represents we're getting uh, again 0.4 billion new users a year but compared to prior years this is not growing as fast all right so let's look at a kind of a sciency problem acceleration Suppose a particle travels according to the equation s of t equals 100 t minus 16 t squared plus 200, where s equals distance in feet and t is time in seconds. Find the acceleration. Note the derivative of s is the change in distance over time, or in this problem it's the change in feet per second. This is not the acceleration, but the speed or the velocity. When we accelerate, we increase our speed. So acceleration is the rate of change of speed or velocity, or the derivative of velocity, which is the second derivative of distance. So now that we know that, we are ready to find the acceleration. First, we can find the velocity, which is the derivative of position, or distance. And that's an easy derivative to calculate, as you see. And then we can find acceleration, which is the derivative of the velocity, or the second derivative of position, and we get negative 32 feet per second. You might also recognize this 